The beginning of Spring Rounds marks a return to the pastoral mode of the introduction to Part 1, following the military-dominated modes of augers and abduction. After the pounding chords and repeated fanfares at the end of abduction, the texture suddenly empties out, and we hear a simple lyrical diatonic melody accompanied only by a trill, all played softly by solo winds. The same music returns at the end of the scene, and that circular formal arrangement is itself an indicator of the pastoral mode. But there are two contrasting sections in the middle. The first is a religious procession, marked Sostenuto e Pesante, that features a melody we first heard in Augurs of Spring. The second is a military outburst, marked Vivo, where the fanfare from abduction makes a reappearance. The four sections of the movement thus chart a progression from a pastoral, diatonic, on F, associated with the introduction to part one, to a solemn religious procession on E flat with a melody from augurs, to a wild military dance on C using the fanfare melody from abduction, and ending with a return to the pastoral, initially on F, but then moving to G. According to Kraft, the opening of spring rounds is a traditional circle dance, a corovode, in which five small circles of dancers slowly gyrate. The women stand apart from the men, extending their arms in gestures of exorcism. In the Hudson Nijinsky choreography, the tall women in mauve, making their initial appearance, introduce serenity into the tribal celebrations by detaching from a line of other women and by showing everyone through their contrapuntal bows how to honor the earth. The scene begins with a sudden reduction in density and intensity from the end of the previous scene as we move abruptly from a triumphal victory dance in military mode to a modest circle dance in pastoral mode. We hear a slow moving melody in octaves accompanied only by a trill on E flat and F which continues from the previous scene. The melody which I call women's circle dance number one, is diatonic. Its notes belong to F aeolian. The E flat F trill also belongs to this scale. The melody features the descending minor third as a recurring motive, first E flat C, then A flat F. It thus has affinities with previous pastoral melodies going back to the beginning of the ballet. The melody is six measures long. It consists of two melodic units each heard three times with insertions and deletions that lengthen or shorten them. The insertions and deletions create changes in the meter, which is basically two groups of three measures each. Within the larger triple hypermeter, the motivic descending minor thirds can be heard over longer spans of time. Although the association is far from perfect, in general, triple hypermeter is associated with the female characters, the old woman, the young women, 
and often with the pastoral mode. The melody is strongly associated with the fanfare melody in the previous scene. Same upper and lower components, same 0257 frame, B flat C, E flat F. Both passages are strongly centered on F, another point of contact between them. This is what I think of as an expressive inversion, the same musical materials repurposed for very different expressive effects. It is also closely linked with two of the Shepherd's Pipes melodies from the introduction to part one. In this case, both the structural frame and the pastoral mode are shared. In the second section of the scene, there's a radical change of expressive mode, from pastoral to religious, from a simple song marked Tranquilo to a stately procession marked Sostenuto e Pesante. The melody was prefigured in augurs and becomes the main melody here. This section of the scene builds to a climax through increasingly thick and dissonant planing. At the climax, the music achieves a state of complete coagulation and violent breaking apart. In the Hudson Nijinsky choreography, this is the section in which the men return and advance with a steady march while the melodic interjections are danced by the women. That choreography matches musical distinctions we have been tracking from the beginning of the ballet. Low register music with a thick texture is for the men. High register melodies, especially played by solo winds, are for the women. This block is mostly a harmony layer, a sort of steady vamp until the main melody enters. From the pastoral first block in F. Aeolian, we have shifted to a religious procession in E flat Dorian. The G natural is replaced by G flat. On eight of the nine downbeats, we hear the perfect fifth E flat B flat in the bass, asserting a shift in centric focus from F C in the previous block to E flat B flat in this block. Within the ritual of abduction, the music shifted from an E-flat-oriented chase to an F-oriented victory celebration of the men's triumph over the women. Here in spring rounds, the music shifts in the opposite direction, from a pastoral F 
to a religious E flat. The harmonic motion binds the end of abduction to the opening two blocks of rounds. The diatonic collections get progressively flatter from three flats to four flats to five flats as the centric tone shifts down a whole tone from F to E flat. At the same time, the main tone in the highest voice shifts up from E flat to F, creating a voice exchange that binds these blocks and these scenes together. The lower parts animate the harmony with two Dorian tetrachords moving in parallel fifths, B flat C, D flat E flat, and E flat F, G flat A flat. This mostly harmonic block does contain a brief melodic fragment that traces the Dorian tetrachord F, G, A flat, B flat. The G natural of this tetrachord conflicts with the G flat of the harmonic unit. This is a tune for the women dancers, solo winds, high register, and extends the pastoral mode of the opening block. I'm calling it women's circle dance number two. Women's circle dance number two evokes the young men's melody from augers. The affective contrast is heightened by the shared pitch location. The eight-measure block is divided evenly into two four-measure phrases. The phrases themselves, however, have different proportions. The first has three measures of ostinato and one measure of melody. The second has two measures of ostinato and two measures of melody. In the heavy tread of its quarter notes and in the regular four-measure groupings, the music suggests a slow, solemn procession. In block three, a seven measure block, the basic one measure harmonic unit from block two, E flat, B flat on the downbeat, Dorian tetrachords and ascending parallel fifths, is heard in every measure. Above the repetitive harmony layer, we hear a more slowly moving Dorian tetrachord ascending and descending through B-flat C, D-flat E-flat. The melody was prefigured toward the end of augers and becomes the main melody in this section of spring rounds. I'll call it the spring rounds procession. Along with the trudging harmony, it conveys the sense of a slow moving solemn procession, possibly a funeral procession, but certainly something religious, sacred, and ritualistic. It also bears an affinity with women's circle dance number two from the previous block.
The spring rounds procession melody has two basic units, repeated B-flats and a quick ascent and descent through the tetrachord. In keeping with the sense of this music as a stately formal procession, the hypermeter is basically quadruple, four groups of four measures of four four. The melody is accompanied in parallel motion, planing. To stay within prevailing diatonic collection, the motion is not strictly parallel, it's tonal, not real. The chords thus vary intervallically, but all can be thought of as an incomplete diatonic seventh chord with the third of the chord in the melody. To put it another way, the melody is shadowed by notes a third and a fourth below it. As we have observed, diatonic planing of this kind is generally associated with the pastoral or religious modes. This procession melody bears a strong affinity with women's circle dance number one from block one, especially its upper component. The pastoral has morphed into the religious. In block four, the texture begins to thicken. The one measure harmonic unit and the Dorian melody with planing continue as before, but in a somewhat more complicated rhythmic layout. There are four statements of the bass ostinato, of which the fourth is slightly elongated to six beats by a neighbor note. The melody provides one statement of its two-measure prototype followed by two compressed statements. The three melodic statements progressively diminish in length from eight beats to six beats to four beats. To these pre-existing parts, a new melodic strand is added. It is a scalar tetrachord, C, D flat, E flat, F. That's 0, 1, 3, 5, not Dorian. It traverses the tetrachord in scalar order, 
down, up, down, up. This new melodic strand interjects an element of FC-centeredness as a counterweight to the prevailing E-flat, B-flat, thus continuing to explore the relationship between E-flat and F as pitch centers. F-centered in block one, E flat centered in block two. E flat centered in block three. and finally F-centered here in block four. Block five is a modified repeat of block two. Block five compresses block two from eight to six measures by omitting one measure of ostinato from each of the two phrases of the block. The procession is intensifying. Here's block two. And here is block five. In block six, the music continues to thicken and intensify as we reach the end of this section. Above the continuing bass ostinato, the melody begins in its usual way, a rest and three-quarter note B-flats in the first measure, and a quick ascent and descent through the B-flat C, D-flat, E-flat tetrachord in the second. But every statement thereafter is truncated. The melodic descent is lopped off each time. Each statement reaches upward toward E-flat and ends there.
above the bass ostinato and below the melody with its diatonic planing, both familiar from earlier blocks, we have an extremely dense new chordal layer. It consists of a highly dissonant planing accompaniment to a new 0246 based melody. Each melodic note is the root of a major triad in 6 3 position, with a dissonant distractor 11 semitones below the root at the bottom of the chord. The melody descends through its 0246 frame in three moves B flat to A, B flat, A flat, G flat, and finally B flat, A flat, G flat. E. Melodies of this type are associated mostly with wild, frenzied dances, like the Dance of the Earth and the Sacrificial Dance. In the dense, dissonant layering of this block, we get a small hint of that wildness and frenzy. In the cadential coagulation that concludes the block, the melody is extended downward to C within the same whole tone scale, and the planing accompaniment follows with three dissonant chords, consisting of a major triad with a dissonant distractor, a semitone above its root. Next, we get a short, violent, contrasting section a wild outburst after a solemn procession. The fanfare melody comes from abduction, and this section is a compressed and transposed repetition of the final section from abduction, complete with punctuating chords. The expressive mode is military, but with a strong hint of a wild dance. Although the music is wild, its meter is more regular than it was in abduction, from unpredictable shifts to a steady 4-4. Harmonically, the music is centered on C, in the middle of a scene that has mostly been on E-flat, another juxtaposition of these two familiar centers. Choreographically, there is a stark disagreement among the historical sources. Robert Kraft, evidently speaking for Stravinsky, says, the women leave the stage and the men dance the orchestral coda, vivo, alone. In Hodson's reconstruction of Nijinsky's choreography, however, the vivo section is a stamping dance for the women. In my own view, the melody used here, Abduction Fanfare No. 1, so strongly associated with violent assertion of male power, suggests that Kraft is right, this should be a dance for men. Spring Rounds is framed by a gentle pastoral circle dance for women but this wild outburst brings a violent male military mode into the center of the scene. The melody for this block comes from the ritual of abduction, extending the ascending seven cycle established there. Through the melody I'm calling abduction fanfare number one, this block brings the violent assertion of male power from abduction into the center of the otherwise pastoral or religious spring rounds. Its focus on the CG frame is yet another instance of the intrusion of C into harmonic regions dominated mostly by E flat, an arrangement that was particularly characteristic of augers. The melody statements are punctuated by five groups of fortissimo chords, arranged palindromically by the number of chords in the group, one, two, nine, two, one. Like the melody, the chords are mostly oriented towards C and CG, fleshed out as C minor or C major, with a dissonant distractor D flat plus a major or minor seventh. 
melody and harmony together represent the violent intrusion of C, associated here with a frenzied fanfare into a scene that has otherwise been oriented towards a religious E flat. In this final section of the scene, the opening pastoral music returns, and this return itself is a mark of the pastoral. It concludes a larger expressive progression, pastoral on F, religious on E flat, military wild dance on C, returning to pastoral on G. This final block of spring rounds returns to the opening music of the scene with the same trill on E flat, the same descending minor thirds, the same diatonic melody in octaves, and roughly the same rhythmic layout. But although the melodies start out the same, they diverge on the downbeat of the third measure, where the block eight melody is transposed up two semitones from F aeolian to G aeolian. Like the pastoral introduction to part one, the pastoral spring rounds thus ends with a transposition of its opening melody. In the introduction to part one, the transposition was down a semitone, indicating a rupturing of the pastoral mode and presaging the arrival of day. Here, in spring rounds, the transposition up two semitones has a different feel, more a heightening of the pastoral than a break with it. <laughs> 